The new podcast, In the Shadow of Princeton, starts as the matriarch of a prominent Princeton family is found stabbed to death in her locked basement. Investigators look from a serial attacker to her family to Princeton University students. One hot-blooded investigator sees a conspiracy. Is he way off base, or does privilege let you get away with murder? In the Shadow of Princeton is available wherever you get podcasts, or you can binge it ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Chauncey Billups enters the Hall of Fame. The Blazers are 1-1 one one after two games in the preseason with Scoot Henderson looking up and down, but Donovan Klingon looking pretty solid as a rookie big man for the Blazers. Welcome to the Blazer Focus Podcast. I'm Aaron Fentress of the Oregonian and Oregon Live, and I'm joined by Craig Burnback. Craig, you are kind of blocked out, blocked out from uh, watching these games, right? I mean, you, yeah, they were. Well, I was in Seattle for the first game against the Clippers, and then I got Blazer Vision for the second game on Sunday, but you did some listening, you did some box watching, Watching, so you're gonna be able to have a take for us or two? Yeah, I listened to. <laughs> I didn't listen to all of it on the radio, so <laughs> my take is all through Travis Demers' eyes, you know. So blame him. <laughs> That's my point. Whatever Travis. Travis said <laughs> that. <laughs> He said, according to Travis, he said a lot of the turnovers in the sources, Sacramento game were not forced. They were. They were <laughs> Sacramento just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let's start with Chauncey. Right, yeah, Chauncey yeah, Billups yeah. goes into the Hall of Fame. Amazing. Well yeah, done. Yeah, congratulations. You know, five time yeah. All Star, three times All NBA, is All Defensive Team guy, won a championship, Finals MVP, et cetera, et cetera. Mr. Big Shot uh, played in an era where he didn't necessarily take a lot of threes, and he didn't shoot that much. He was a true point guard, and he had a shot more often. He would average more points per game than he did, but he did his role and played good defense under Larry Brown, obviously. But anyway. He goes into the Hall of Fame, 16-minute speech. He told us last week he had a 14-minute speech and had to be cut down to seven. Then he goes out there and does 15. So I don't know what happened with that. I'm going to give him I'm gonna bust his chops a little bit tomorrow at practice. But it was a good speech. He covered, you know, he went through his whole life and his early yep. struggles and how Terrell Brandon, yeah, Grand High School, old. Oregon All-Star, um, excuse me, an NBA All-Star, um, helped him in Minnesota. And then he goes to Detroit and, and blows up there. And pretty much carved out what turned out to be his uh, Hall of Fame worthy legacy there. But you know, what, what did you think of his induction and the things he had to say about his career? We're gonna get to the other part later. You mentioned the Blazers later. We'll get to that in yeah. a second. But just in general, just Chauncey as a player. Well, you know, when he spelled it out, it reminded you what we knew but forgot, like how that the beginning of his career was. It took a while. It took multiple teams, um, and basically he went to be a backup. And that's where he learned how to be a pro. You know, he gave Sam Mitchell credit, teaching him how to be a professional right. basketball player. Sam Mitchell would play until he was like 107 years old in the NBA. <laughs> but, you know, had multiple roles in the NBA from a starter to a, you know, bench player. And then Terrell Brandon, you know, and that's obviously a local name to hear them, that and, and how. Uh, and, of course, the credit goes uh, as for his coaching went to what a lot of players say is the greatest, the best Basketball coach, Larry Brown. And, you know, Larry Brown's career is crazy. Like when you look at his uh, longevity and uh, obviously he had uh, not perfect as far as getting along with everybody. And uh, but uh, he talked about how Larry Brown really helped him and, and, and found his uh, helped him find his way. Um, and you're like, wow, you're right. This this is a very rare thing for a th number three overall pick to flame out in less than like basically a year with his first team, then kind of flame right. out with his second team, go to his third team to be a backup and then end up in the NBA hall of fame. Actually, I think you skipped a team. Hold on a second. Is it his fourth team that he ended up? <laughs> well, he was okay. So on the Knicks, but didn't play. Well, it, that was late. Yeah. I mean, early. So he's Boston yep. traded to Toronto, then traded to Denver then to Orlando. Oh, I forgot about Orlando. He was in Orlando yeah. for a hot minute. Um, and then goes to Minnesota. And then to, in, in and Orlando, he didn't play because he was hurt. Right. Denver traded him while he that's was hurt. What I was, so that's that, Boston, Toronto, Denver, and Orlando. Four teams. And he shot, get this, he shot under 40% at every stop until from the field until he got to Minnesota. Yep. And that's sort of when things changed for him. But anyway, and what's crazy is like when you look at his three point numbers, they were like equal. 
Like he was shooting as well from layup to from th- three point zone. Yeah. You know, it's like 36 and 36. Yeah, one year he shot 38% from the field and 36 on threes. Like that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like that's a, that's a point guard who's not getting it done at any, you yeah. know, at any level. Um, so I, I just think that was super impressive to hear that. It helps you understand a little bit why, and, and I don't want to go too far ahead, but why he can be so level headed about uh, where he is as a, a head coach, um, because it was not just like everything didn't go right. Pure talent. But he also right. talked about the fact that, you know, his life as far as career wasn't that there weren't that many obstacles. Like he had to navigate some, but not, you know, he was a top high school player, then a top college player in, in you know, a state where, you know, he grew up and got to be the third overall draft pick. And that was almost the first time that he wasn't successful. Um, right. But, you know, I, I was trying to think of someone else that was similar, you know, a top five pick that took that long to, and then ended up in the hall of fame. And I, and I don't know. And I don't think it happens in the modern NBA, like the patience level. He's already playing in Europe somewhere. You know, by the time you're on your fourth or fifth team, I mean, there's guys that we could talk about that people keep on hoping for, and it just doesn't turn, but for him, it turned. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of respect for that. And also it does remind me of how even at the top level, who you're associated with and who takes you under the wing and who you're learning from matters. I mean, the guys he's talking about, like Larry Brown, like when you talk to basketball people and you ask who's the, you know, the, the greatest like basketball coach, Larry Brown's name's always on the list. And you look at his levels. I mean, he did it in college. He did it at NBA. He did it with no talent, a lot of talent. I mean, it's why he was eight, he's eight, he was eighty something years old, and he was still on a on a bench, you know, helping out. Um, so, uh, I think that just shows you that sometimes it's not just skill and effort. There's a little bit of luck to who you've got in your corner. One hundred percent. And. Let's say he goes to Detroit and has a few good years and then leaves, but doesn't win the championship, isn't finals MVP. Is he remembered the same? Probably oh, not. Is he Hall of Famer? I would say absolutely oh, not. He's not like, that's me. Yeah, that's the big thing that, that sort of pushed him over the top. And then, of course, I mean, he followed up after that and still played well in Denver and did some other things. Because I don't think he was even an all-star yet when he won the finals MVP. So at that point, he's Iguodala, right? He's, he's, M, was it M, not ML Carr? Who was the one who got, so who got the MVP? Uh, Cornbread Maxwell got the MVP when the Celtics Cedric beat Maxwell. the Lakers and the, Cedric Maxwell, when the Celtics beat the Lakers, he's not in the Hall of Fame, right? So after that's when the All Stars come and the, and the defensive team. So he obviously poured it on, but the anchor is that, that uh, finals MVP, which, you know, and you want to change it. But if, if you look at his resume, team, if you look at his resume yeah. and just his numbers, and take that out, you're like, huh? Yeah, but that's but that's the pro basketball. Excuse, that's the basketball Hall of Fame. There's a lot of there's guys in the basketball. Of guys. Hall and there was guys last night. You cannot yes. compare. It, it is the exact opposite of baseball. In baseball, you got to have the numbers because it's just a number driven sport. In basketball, you can be forgiven. I mean, I, I'm still amazed Tony Kukoc is in there, even though a lot some of that because is international you know, overseas play. stuff. But even then, he wasn't. He wasn't that great. He was only there oh. for a few years anyway. But right, and I think that. Yeah, Chauncey Billups is. I thought you about the challenge. He's a. He's a. No, I look. Yeah, I'm mad at the baseball Hall of Fame because to me it was the only true Hall of Fame. And with this whole steroids thing, where people pick and choose who they think used and who they didn't, um, it bothers me because it it, it's not the same because the right guys, some of the right guys are not in it. The basketball Hall of Fame is the basketball Hall of Fame. It's not the NBA Hall of Fame. So it gets it's all so confusing anyway. Because Christian Leitner is a Hall of Famer. Because he's one of the greatest college basketball <laughs> players of all time, you know what I right. mean? Like, so they gotta wing that. They gotta wing that thing, man. They gotta have I, an I'm NBA with you. wing. I don't like and it. And a women's wing well, and a college yeah. wing. It's just bizarre. Like, I knew. You, so, you, how, where do you do the math on guys? Two years ago, when I talked to Bell's about this, I said, "Dude, Maurice Cheeks is in. There's no way you're not gonna get it." Right. Maurice Cheeks was a four-time All Star. Oh. Okay. G- great defender. Yeah. Great. You know, huge part of that team. But even even his time in Philly, he averaged 12 points a game, right? 12 points and seven assists. That's like hitting 245 with 13 home runs, right? But you're playing some good def- gold glove defense maybe, right? If he got in, there's no way right. Chauncey couldn't get in because Chauncey has more all-stars and he has 
a finals MVP, right? Which to me, right? And when Mo Cheeks won, you, you agree. won, it wasn't him. <laughs> Moses Malone. Well, yeah, he know. was the third or fourth option. Yeah, at, fall, at fall, best. fall, baby. Yeah. Like Moses Malone. The fourth option because they had Andrew Tony. Yeah. Andrew Tony was the third option. Yeah, fall, fall, fall. Exactly. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> anyway, that guy was the monster. But you know that that's a whole different debate. Chauncey got in. Chauncey uh, was an NBA Finals MVP, and Chauncey Billups took a career that looked like it was going to end with a bust. You know, a top three bust and turned his career into where we're debating whether or not he should be in the hall of fame. Right. Like, like, right. so good for you. You, he's already won and he's in the hall of fame. So congrats and uh good speech. And I, I liked, you know, it's good because that's the time when someone tells you what, who impacted them the most. Cause they, like you said, they told him seven minutes, he went long. But you really got to pick well, and choose. But, every, but everyone, but everyone went of about course that it's long. Lying, so maybe dude. he got, maybe he got, what are they maybe he got do? the timing Pull wrong. Them off. Time's wrong. <laughs> you know. But here's another thing about, and I think people do this in basketball is they take into account the era because had he played in today's era and have had the green light to shoot, he averages more than 16, 17, 18. He's averaging more like 22, 23, 24 because he's going to take more shots. I was looking back at some of his uh, his biggest series he played in. He played in a series. I, Gosh, I can't remember who it was against now, but like, like games were decided. It was Indiana, I think. It was like games were like 79, 75 right. you know, in the series. Right. So Detroit tried to really, you know, shrink the game. And so that's going to obviously impact your points. Regardless, definitely deserving of being in the Hall of Fame. Now, later in the speech, he said he thanked Jody Allen for giving her a chance, to, you know, to, to coach the Blazers. And he said how his coaching career has started out sort of like his playing career yep. did, but he expects to win at some point as he finally did as a player. The big key there not is... Not immediately! Is, well, yeah, he said not immediately. It's going to take some time, but is it going to be in Portland or could it yeah. be elsewhere? That's the big thing. Like, you know, and I don't want to... I don't I don't, don't want to... We've talked about that. I don't want to get too much in that in terms of whether he's going to be there or not or whether he deserves a contract. But uh, do you think... Let's just say this. Do you think it's more likely that if he ever wins in, in the NBA, it's going to be elsewhere or in Portland? Oh, it's more likely it'll be elsewhere just because he's okay. in the final year of his contract with with a, a GM that's also unsure and an owner that's unsure. I mean, there's too much. I mean, if you're going to do odds or betting, I would bet it's going to be somewhere else. It doesn't mean it's going to be, but... Right. I mean, when you're in the final year of your contract and we use the term lame duck and they haven't extended you and they probably haven't extended you because the ownership doesn't isn't going to allow the GM to extend you because they're not sure if that guy is long term. And, you know, if there's a new GM, he's going to want his own. They often he or she might want their own coach. Right. And if they're going to sell the team, which could happen whenever owners are going to want their own people. So, um and when his con like it's a two way street, you know, I've said this over and over again is that when his contract's up, he could go somewhere else if he wants to, <laughs> you know, like it's not just do the Blazers want him, it's does Chauncey Billups want the Blazers? He didn't, yeah, because this time he'll be able to leave this time, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, he won't, he won't be on the contract, so yeah, he can do whatever he wants. And we know that he is highly respected. On multiple levels, from the broadcasting booth to the GM booth to the coaching booth, you know, uh, uh, like, and he did not take this job as a developmental job. No, he took it to he did you know to coach another Hall of Fame point guard. <laughs> All right, speaking of Hall of Fame, future point Hall guards, of Famers potential, a future potential. So you know, Chauncey struggled early. Scoot struggled early, albeit just, just really one, one season. But the preseason started, and I'm going to be honest with you, all I care about in the preseason, really, and especially with Shaden and Ann out, is, you know, see some evidence that Scoot has improved and sort of watch Donovan Clean and yep. see what he does. So let's start with Scoot. Horrible first game. Not he good. had two turnovers in the first, the two, same, in the first right? minute. Same thing. In the first minute. Two turnovers. He, he shot four of 16. He shot one of six, I think, on three, seven turnovers. It was it was all the greatest hits from the best the, the worst. worst performances he had last year, yeah. right? Uh, but you know, I you know, Chauncey sort of said, look, he was kind of jacked up for this game. He probably was a little overzealous. Um, he's been looking much better than that in practice. I believe that, but still, I, I just 
I, I hope for his sake that that doesn't, those types of performance don't happen often. Now he comes back against the Kings, plays much better. 17 points, seven assists, only two turnovers or one turnover, maybe. Um, I'll look it up here. Okay. And shot better, you know, not great, five of 13, but he controlled the game better. Two steals, one turnover, it was one turnover, yep. uh, and played better. So after two games, you know, what do we, what do we make of this? Like, is it just, just another mixed bag with him with, it's going to be mostly just mediocre or did you think there were any signs that showed, okay, he's going to turn the corner. You know, you want me to do this in the preseason and I can't do it. Like (laughs) I can't do it. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to lie to our people. I'm just saying, I'm not going to hold you to it. I'm not going to hold you to it. Just any inkling of anything. No, it shows to me. I've learned uh, nothing, you know, like (laughs) he had good games too. And then bad games. So to me, again, this is about what, Joe Cronin said clarity, and clarity doesn't come in two games, and it certainly doesn't come in two preseason games. Uh, I don't like the fact that, you know, he again shot terribly. He doesn't look like – I didn't see it, but but from what you hear and look at the numbers, uh, in the t- first two games, I'm not like, oh, he solved it. You know, he can shoot now. Uh, yeah. And it's not like – his, his misses didn't look like, oh, he just missed, or – Wow, his his shooting stroke is really money. He just had it off. Like it just there was nothing in the two games, and I was I was at the game against um, the Clippers, where you were like, okay, yeah, that's a different guy. Again, early preseason, but you know, I'm 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 gonna give him obviously a lot of time, but I want to see it so badly, <laughs> yeah, because I want him to I want him to do well. It makes the team interesting. If he's right. if he is really good and fun to watch and exciting and he, and and it's what you know it, it it's what the Blazers need and so I'm with you I you know the first game listening on the radio it was not good and the numbers were terrible uh, and then the numbers in the second game uh, we're not gonna lie to the people Sacramento played horrible. <laughs> You know, they, yeah, they shot five of five of twenty nine on threes, was it something like that? And that and and they had uh, seven hundred and sixty two turnovers. <laughs> <laughs> so it was okay. It was only seven hundred and twenty seven. I mean, they had twenty. <laughs> I mean, they turned the ball over twenty six times, and and it was like twenty seven actually twenty seven. But, but it was like in bunches. You know, you're like listen, yeah. you're like oh, they threw it again. Oh, they, they, you know, and so, um, but you know, and uh, and and I can't imagine that was all Blazers. Um, but you know, they played their, they played their starters. All, you know, they all played 28 plus minutes. So it's not like they, they were playing about against just, you know, just garbage. They, they played them. They just didn't play well. So, I mean, Sabonis had five turnovers when your center has five turnovers. That's like, that is not, that is not good. <laughs> that's really, really bad. And he's not a bad, he's a great player. So, um, you know, you'd rather win them than lose them when you win by a lot. I mean, they won by uh, you know, 20 points, and they were up like 30. So good for them. Um, but I didn't – There was not. I'm not walking away. What I'm walking away with Klingon is, is that he's not afraid. You know, you he played against uh, big, powerful people um, because even Alex Len's not – He's not outstanding, you know, but he's an NBA center and he's big. He's a big dude. And Klingon clearly is not afraid. Um, and, you know, got a double double in, in a very short period of time, got 10 and 10. So that's to me, that's, that's nice. That's what you want to, that's what you want from the guy to when he's just starting to play. And to me, that's important because rebounding in the NBA is not a gift when you're just because you're big. <laughs> True. One one thing real quickly on Scoot. He did do a good job against the Kings of getting to the basket. Mm-hmm. He had a lot. I think he had four baskets where he got into the paint and made things happen, which is where I think he needs to live. That and kicking out, getting assists, not worried too much about his jump shot. So he did do much better in that regard. Yeah, he got to the line. You know, eight free throws. Yeah, he got to the line too. Yeah, he had, yeah, six of eight in the game against the Kings. Um, <clears throat> as far as Klingon, his first shot was a three, which I thought was hilarious. Nice. He's wide open. He drain, he drains it. Big dude, obviously, is going to just, just his mere presence is going to grab rebounds because he's out there. I thought he looked super slow um, against the, against NBA athletes, which, you know, some nights is going to be a, a problem. Mm-hmm. I got to see some offensive stuff 
a bag, a small bag, something. Give me a junk hook, jump hook. Give me a baseline jumper. Give me something besides the dunk and the occasional three. But you know he's young, right? I'm not yeah, saying you're I, gonna, I see that this you're, week or that anything bag like that. Is small. But over time, but over time, you want to see that develop. You know, I, it's just it's funny to me because you and I grew up in an era where big men. You know, the best big men were really skilled with the ball around the basket sure. and can do things. And it's fascinating to me. And of course, having being that tall and having that kind of skill is rare, which is why elite centers are rare. But it's just mesmerizing to me that there's so many big, tall athletes running around who just around the basket can't give you a baby jump hook, can't give you a Kevin McHale, can't give you, a, uh, you know, just just be money in, in doing that. So I just I just want to see him develop that. But I like the aggression. I like the fact that he goes after rebounds. Uh, Billups talked about after the Clippers game that he wanted to see him do a better job of not letting his hands drop. He says his hands are dropping too much. He wants them up, ready to play defense, ready to be a wall, which he acknowledged after the game that, yes, he needs to do a better job of that to just understand his role is to be a wall, right, yep. <laughs> to impede shots. And if he does that, then your rim protection improves and then your defense is going to improve even if it's just 20 minutes a night from this kid right um so first two games positive signs no doubt he's a kid right he should be a junior in college he played he started full-time once in college so long you know runway for him to to prove himself but i, I like the sign so far just give me some offense down the line yeah i think you're gonna I think you're going to have to let that go for a while because he didn't have that in college. <laughs> you know what I mean? How hard is that, though? He's 7'2". He catches it. He makes one step. He does a little fade away. No one's blocking yeah, it. Yeah. Come on. It's hard, <laughs> apparently. It's really hard. Because <laughs> they don't, like you said, they don't have it, you know. Uh, and it takes time to develop it. And it also takes um, individual coaching for that. What you get in the NBA. I developed it on a Nerf hoops. I developed it on a Nerf oh, hoops. Me so too, I man. I was a big it. man on Nerf hoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even at four foot eight, you know, I was dunking, you know, the nerf hoops. You were man in the paint. Huh? Yeah, I wasn't afraid. <laughs> but, you know, I was mem mem memorizing the Bernard King turnaround from the corner, you know, which oh, you was go. awesome. And then, but that's what, you know, Patrick Ewing with the turnaround, like that was a guy who had no offense in college other than complete, total physical domination. And the big question right. mark is, could Patrick Ewing score in, in the NBA? And, and he ended up being one of the, you know, the greatest ever, but it wasn't. And, you know, day one and Akeem, obviously the bag that he had, guys that we're talking about and Bill Cartwright for your teams had just wonderful. Yeah. I don't know why he, he shot from the top of seven foot two, <laughs> but yeah, it's a different game though. And there just aren't NBA centers that are uh, coming into this league and developing that low post moves because the league's all about dunking and hitting threes, you know, leaving, you can, Zone changes the world, you know what I mean? Like, you couldn't play zone when those guys were there. So, double teaming was uh, a, a big risk. Um, so, it changed. the game has changed. But um, to me, it's the defensive end because you talk about hands down. Like, some of that's being in shape. And there's a difference between college shape and NBA shape because when you're as big as he is, you could just take a – few seconds here and there and that six foot seven center is not going to do anything and you can cover, recover and block it. Your hands are down in the NBA and you're a big man. You have just been called for a foul. <laughs> okay, like it's over. Like they see your hands are going to run right into you and there's going to be a foul every time. So he's going to have to learn uh, that. I mean, he's talked about getting his wind and knowing that he's got to be in better shape. Uh, and it's, yeah. it's hard for, you know, those big dudes, <clears throat> like their bodies at 20, I don't know what that's like, but you know, to get that tall, it takes a little while to get control of what you, you know, that, that kind of size and, and, uh, and get wind. Uh, and in the NBA, that's why the athletically, they're just so superior. It's such an amazing thing to see. That's where like dominating will teach him. Like he's probably killing him in practice far and getting up and down the court. Cause that guy's, you know, just an amazing athlete that's done this for a while. So but yeah, I think you're gonna have to let it go a little bit, and 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 maybe here and there you'll see a offensive move. And uh, but I'm with you on the hook. I don't I don't know why. I mean, I feel like it's unblockable. <laughs> when you're seven two, you're kind of throwing it downward. It feels on Nerf. It was easy for you know to throw it down like from there. <laughs> so I don't know. I could palm the Nerf and everything. Make a so. hundred, make a hundred a day, and you'll become good at it. There's, I just can't see how you can at 7-2. All right, let's touch on some other other guys real quick. Uh, 
Hey, Jabari Walker said he wanted to work on a shooting. He was three of three from three-point range against the uh, Kings. So far this season, he is seven of 13 in the preseason. Shooting over 50%, so he's off to a good start. Dude was plus 27. I'm just saying, plus 27, (laughs) baby. That's that's pretty good. Uh, Chris Murray, two for five against the Kings, one of three on threes in the previous game against the Clippers, he started in place of Ant and yeah, uh, no. yeah, Ant was out and he started in place of Ant, but well, but he didn't start when Denny came back. So, who he started in place of doesn't really matter. He started four seven from the field, one of two on threes. So, he showed something again. It's just preseason. Tumani Kamara lit up the first game 19 points, nine rebounds, five of nine from the field. If that guy figures out how to shoot, that would be huge for this franchise, not oh. just him. 13 points and four. Just one rebound against the Kings, but four or five from the field. So he's off to a good start offensively. Denny Avdia. Is that how you say it? Avdia. That's it, right? Avdia. But Avdia? I don't know. Call him Denny. Avdia. Is the V silent? Is the V silent? I think so. No, it's, it's like a yeah. No, it's, it's Avdia. It's, it's like a, Avdia. It's like a right? yeah. Avdia. 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 All right. He missed the, he sat out the first game for personal reasons and then was two for eight, one of four on threes, five rebounds, five points. I hear something for you. You ready? This is the stat of the first two games. Hit it. Jeremy Grant. No rebounds. Seven of 14 from the field for 24 points in just 32 minutes with zero. <laughs> Rebounds. Oh, he's coming. You've got, you, I've got you. There. And assists. <laughs> and assists. Uh, this is zeros. A, let me just say this for our people that have been listening since we started. This is like my one win. <laughs> Where like you're like, I was wrong. You were right, Craig. Because <laughs> I was, I still remember. I'm like, why do you think he's gonna rebound now? And you had all these great reasons. And now, now you're okay, so mad just, at okay. it. You're bringing can it up I say one thing in my defense? Game. Can I say one thing in my defense? It's fine. Just let me, just hold on. I said he was going to rebound ben, better for a team that was trying to win okay. with Damien. Because Damien would demand that he and go get rebounds and he would see the value in it and give you that extra effort. Without Damien, and when, since he knows they're, you're trying to lose, he's probably thinking... Why am I going to take my skinny, lanky, runway model, model body into the paint and get banged around if I don't need to? I mean, come on. And that's why Danny is going to be so huge because Danny had five boards yeah. in, in 19 minutes and Grant couldn't get one in 30 plus minutes over two games. <laughs> to me, it's, it's, pretty, a, it's pretty a, unbelievable. It's absurd dude. because it's like, it's a, I, as a, the smallest guy on the court my whole life. Every once in a while, the ball just bounces you your way. You walk away with a couple boards. You I mean, walk it just away comes. With, you're like, I'm, I'm walking away with a couple boards. Sometimes it's <laughs> on the ground, and you just go get it. <laughs> just, it's just a bizarre that you can play forward and get none. But it's preseason. It doesn't matter. And he's not a great rebounder. I mean, he's not a good rebounder for a forward. He's just not. I mean, the numbers show it, and – and it's been his entire career. So you can, you can have this imaginary world where it would have worked and he would have raised his game and averaged eight rebounds a game, like you said. I don't think I ever said eight. God, we'll go back. We're going to go to tape. It definitely was, I think it was eight, but it definitely was more all than 5.5. 5. All tapes in which I might have been wrong have been destroyed. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, honestly, the, de- the, the Grant thing to me is just, you know, it's just hard. Because I don't know what he's doing, where his fit is, and how he can keep it, you know, and it's going to be hard for him to – uh, you know, he's a pro, so he'll do it and he get paid to do it, but there's not a lot of um, long-term fit there for him. Um, but, you know, you go one and one the preseason, you play one bad game, one good game, you're like, okay, that's basically where we're at, and none of it matters. And they hadn't won a preseason game against an NBA team since like 2021, right? So anytime you end – Really? Oh, yeah, something crazy like that. <laughs> Because they beat like uh, Maccabee, like the Israeli team, and and stuff like that. And they, but no, they hadn't won a game preseason game in a long time. Uh, no, but they don't matter. So, uh, so that that then was the first. Wait, oh, in two thousand twenty one is the first, last time they won one. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I thought wow. you would know. <laughs> I, so, you how much I pay attention? I did not know. That's crazy, though. That means that, that was only the second preseason win I've ever witnessed covering this team. 
All right. Anything uh, else since 2020? The pro- so 20. So that was the first preseason yep. game I've ever. I, mean, I wasn't there, but I because I started covering them in 2020 in the bubble. Yep. So the 2020-21. See, oh, so wait. Yeah, the Portland Trail. Yeah, okay, so 2020. So, yeah, so I did cover one that, that year. So, first preseason win against an NBA team since 2020. <laughs> so, hey, anytime you snap a losing streak, it's good, right? I, I want to give a shout out, by the way, to uh, Blazers Ed- Edge for that. That's where I read that. So, that's why that's why it's in my brain because I, <laughs> I was checking. Okay, one thing that Chauncey, Chauncey harped on during training camp was pace, playing with pace. They had a pace of 102 against the Clippers and 106 against the Kings. It was 98 last year, 21st in the league. Again, preseason, and Chauncey kind of downplayed it a little bit the first game, didn't think that they were great. But still, you see a little tick up, a little notch up there uh, for the pace. Did you get a sense at all? 27 and, turnovers. You were, you were, 27 turnovers will help you pick up the pace. I mean, that's just – That's true. I mean, that's what it is. And they shot poorly. And they shot poorly, yeah. which means you're getting a lot of rebounds. Um, I mean, yeah, you, I mean – You get 27 turnovers, I, your pace is going to go up. Right. And if you yeah. – let me it's tell you one this. Of those things that's, if the Blazers can force, in quotes, 27 <laughs> turnovers a game, they're going to make the finals. They're going to the finals, bro. <laughs> they're going to make the finals. finals. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, that's final stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I couldn't. You know, on the radio, it's hard. It was a both yeah, games were really, really ass. sloppy. The radio. Everyone, that's right. all I kept hearing. It's still sloppy. It's a little sloppy, and and it's just not. Um, I mean, when you have your five starters out there, that's all that would matter. Would pace almost. You know, once you get into the second group, you're so it's hard to do those numbers. But yeah, we've learned very little uh, in, in the preseason, but <laughs> but we've got games, and that means we're. Like I think it's eight days away from the regular season started. I don't know when of is it of the first NBA game. I don't think the Blazers play there or something like that. Oh, the, yeah, because they're the twenty third. Oh my god, it's exciting! That, it's that close. And in the beginning, it's always like, hey, you never know, you never know. So, uh, and I did see um, video of Sharp warming up without the sling, mm-hmm. doing a little, uh, you know, shooting and dribbling. So that makes. You know, as a, as a, a trained MD, you know, from that video <laughs> on social media, I can predict the healing is going really well. But, I mean, obviously that means it's not – he's not in so much pain that that's good. So um, – because that's the second element of our – what we hope to, to see. Um, but everyone wants the same thing. That's the thing that's interesting is that how hyper-focused the, the coverage and the responses are going to have to be – to scoot. You know what I mean? Like Chauncey's prepared after every game. He knows he's going to have to answer that even more than right. last year. Cause last year was easy in the sense he, well, he's a, he's a rookie. He's, you know, he's learning. It's the first time you can't that that's gone. Now you can't do that um, as effectively because it's not as true. Like it was totally true. It's the first time he's played a road game. It's the first time he's done this. It's the first time he's experienced right. this. That's not it anymore. So uh, the expectations are 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 higher, especially when um, you're going to play. But you know, let's let's be honest. Like you don't the, the game against the, you know the King, no Simons too. You know, like that just Scooting Simons is when Simons is in the game that changes things for Scoot. It just has to because. He's really good at basketball. <laughs> but I'm just like it's different, right? When when they're both in the game, it's going to be that dynamic. We didn't get to see enough of it last year to know what it looks like. Very true. Very true. All right, they host a team from Germany on Wednesday night, and then they host Utah on Friday night. And then they will have four nights off before starting their regular season on the 23rd against Golden State at home. They go Golden State, Pelicans, Pelicans. Well, I'd rather play the Pelicans in Golden State. Then they go to SAC, Clippers, home OKC. Then they go to Phoenix, Pelicans again, Wimby, Minnesota. Could they, could they go one and nine? Yeah. Absolutely not. Then they got Minnesota at home. They're not going to lose all three to New Orleans, though. But listen to this. Then they got Memphis at home, Minnesota home, Minnesota home. 
They're going to play Minnesota three times in four games. Oh, my God. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Their first 13 games, they might be lucky to go 2-11. and 11. And if they go 2-11, that means they're beating. They're defeating some pretty good teams to do that. Holy oh! Well, you play New Orleans three times and Minnesota three times. It is hard to, oh to beat to to beat the same team three times in a row. Dude, they're screwed. So, oh my god! Look, the, you know, you know here's the, thing, the West though. is hard. <laughs> it is hard when you look at the schedule. Every team looks like oh my god because the team you're looking at is one of the worst teams in basketball. Yeah, I mean, who are you going to be so, like? Oh, every game looks like a loss. When do they play Charlotte? You know, like so. You know, <laughs> like, the Wizards. When, when, when do they go east to play the Wizards? You know, exactly. And, but there's you know the the uh, there is for a lot of those teams like what's Golden State game one look like without clay for the first time you know it's it's and they could be rusty so steal that one beat new orleans maybe beat them twice get a you know get a buzzer beater okay shock the world right. go three and two Stop right there make fetchers go oh my look, god look. oh my god they're three and two and then all of a sudden guys are getting injuries left and right i don't want that <laughs> i want them to play well enough to be entertaining and develop but lose so no one gets injured so they can keep playing all year that's what i want yes yeah. <laughs> all right I think we're good. We're good. So we will be back next week after these two preseason games to give you our pre our regular season preview as we look ahead to this daunting schedule. Oh, my God. All that and more coming up next time on the Blazer Focus Podcast. Catch you later.